Hey there, this is Brian, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, two board games that I've played recently that uh, seem very similar at first blush, but then upon digging a little bit deeper, I find that they're very quite different games. So, the first of them is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, and the second is Gumshoe the Hardboiled Detective. So, I've got both here. This is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. So, the way this game works is you have uh, ten different cases. You have a map of London, you have a directory that is sort of like a phone book with names and businesses that you can dig through, and a couple of go-to contacts that you can ask questions. So each case is, um, there's some that are standalone, some that blend together, but generally speaking, you start out with an introduction, you're left to look at your map and the evidence and kind of pick apart. Like if you find a cigar somewhere, you can go visit the cigar shop. If you find poison, you can go visit someone who's a chemist. Like you can dig through and slowly unravel the story until uh, you've come to the point where you're ready to solve the case. And then you can go to the back of the book, read the answers and see how close you were. So um, it's become a favorite of mine. Uh, this is the fourth set in the series uh, and I've enjoyed all four, so I'm only one case into this one so far, but um, really enjoyed it. So the game that I'm comparing it to today, Gumshoe the Hardball Detective. So uh, I've been looking for this game for quite a long time. I know I had heard about it, and um, I had seen a little bit about it, and core concept looks very similar. So every day is a case, and you begin the case by an introduction, about a page and a half of information, just kind of breaking down what, what you should be probably looking at for that day. And then uh, you'll have to go and visit various locations around the city of San Francisco to explore. So like Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, it has a map. It has actually two maps, one of the San Francisco area uh, and then one of just the overall broader Bay Area. Um, but it's actually got a lot of additional materials that Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective does not have. So has loads and loads of uh, fingerprinting materials. So you have in the case, you might encounter some fingerprints and you have to actually study and determine what kind of loops they are to tie them back to fingerprint cards, to tie that back to DMV records and kind of paint the story and help you find clues from that. Um, it, it's got mugshots that also have sometimes of fingerprints or other details that you can dig through. Um, both games, I, I didn't mention about Sherlock Holmes, both games have newspapers for every day of the case saying what's going on in the world that might give you other leads to follow up on. And uh, so at face value, it's very similar, right? So solving a case based on pursuing leads that you're finding over the course of um, just digging through, pursuing other events, like looking in a book to find um, just what's at a certain address that you might want to pry into. What's different about these games, though, that I found is um, Gumshoe surprises me in, so much, in that it, it's not as much of a mystery game the way Sherlock is. So Sherlock, you're, you're brought up with a mystery. So the, the first case in this version of the game, which is the fourth in the series, the Baker Street Regulars, is um, the governess of a, a semi-wealthy family, not terribly rich or anything, um, was kidnapped and doesn't know why. I mean, she, she was under the impression it was due to a ransom, but there were some mysterious circumstances around why she might be challenging that. Some other things going on, interestingly, with the family, and you'll have to answer those. So over the course of your one play session, you'll find out what happened there, um, what parts of the mystery tied together, and which ones are just self self contained and then um, hunt down to an answer very very well done I've always been very impressed by the the cases in Sherlock Holmes consulting detective so in that case the group I was playing with we got 90 points out of possible 150 but uh, the case was very very well done so somebody who's on their a game like if our, if our group made a couple more connections or that that were very reasonable very logical we would have it's very plausible that you can get 150 in, a, in every case. They're very well done from that perspective, that there's always a good logic to it. There's very rarely are we left like scratching our heads. We're, we're, we're all, we're always, you know, when we, when we don't get it, it's still a group that is thinking clearly logical will be able to paste together the puzzle. And it's very well done from that perspective. Um, so, so gumshoe is a little bit different in that, it feels more along the lines of a role-playing game of sorts, where you're playing the role of a detective, you're following leads, but it's more about the adventure, kind of picking it apart and following along. So not as much about solving the mystery and piecing together nuggets. Like even the questions you get at the end of each day, 
there, there's no real points assigned. There's no, there's, there's not even saying that you should be trying to solve each of those by the end of that day, but you might be also in subsequent cases, picking up evidence that would help you become more comfortable that you've solved that case. And then once you've solved it, there's no real finish line on it. There's no, this is the end. I have solved who killed X person. You just, as a group agree that, okay, it probably was that. Then you could probably look at the answer book to see if you were right about it, but there's no other kind of, um, alignment on how well are we doing? Are we pacing well? And the game also has a lot of these kind of adventure game decisions. That's why I mentioned it as a role-playing game, because on day two of the adventure, um, one of the things that we did was you respond to a police call as the first thing you do in the day. And then the rest of the day, depending on how you go, you could end up spending the rest of the day on a choose your own adventure based on that. So you're you hop in the car. So first off, there's a you know there's a robbery going on. You can hop in the car with the police officer, or you can call it a day and not do that. If you hop in the car, you can pursue choose choose of which of the group to pursue when they split off into two different groups. If you pursue one of the branches, you can choose when they when they split into two other groups which one to pursue. Depending on how this happens, you might crash. You might catch one of the guys. Like you might. So, so um, and, and then um, you know, if a car stops, you can chase someone on foot. Um, and it plays out all like this. And it's a little bit different uh, than that we were expecting because in a lot of these cases too, there's not a whole lot to go off of as far as what you would make your how, how you would make your decision. So, for example, you're tailing somebody. They enter an apartment complex. The guy's got a gun. You know this, and so he's, he's dangerous. Do you enter the apartment complex after him, or do you hang out outside and see if he comes out again and wait it out? So in a game where you're on a limited clock, so you're, you're tracking what time it is throughout the day, waiting outside could potentially cost you three hours and you get nothing in return for it. Um, but following him inside could result in him punching you in the face and then you lose three hours. So it's, um, and, and you lose his trail. So, so either way, it seems like it's a little bit random. And I think going into the game, you're supposed to be okay with that fact that you're not ultimately going to have every path lead you somewhere. You're more living the life of a detective and going through the, the pros and cons and the, and the perils that you would face on that kind of job, accepting that you're not going to be able to chase every lead down. If you pursue this, per, this group of suspects, you might never find out what that group of suspects was doing, or you might have to piece together in three days based on something else you read in the newspaper about who that was. So it's a, it's a little bit different. And personally, our group has preferred, and we're still relatively early, so we're two cases into Gumshoe and one case into the latest Sherlock game. But we tend to prefer this, um, the, the way the Sherlock cases are written, that you can package together a case, at the end of the day, figure out, okay, here's what we got, here's what we didn't get. You get some great aha moments, even if the parts you didn't get, your group can kind of like say, okay, yeah, yeah, I understand it now. But, um, and um, so, so being so early into the cases, maybe this is going to change for, for Gumshoe a little bit, but, um, the reason why that's also helpful for us for Sherlock is because sometimes we might go a month or two months between cases. So if we left any dangling threads open from a previous gumshoe case, I, I'm, we're probably not going to remember every character that's been floating around. Like even kind of going through again, there was a character named Roland in the first case that showed up again in some of the encounters we were going through. But um, we were trying to remember even who was Roland. Like we had some notes that we pulled together, but Ultimately, the self-contained probably works better for our lifestyle from that perspective. So, both very interesting games. I mean, uh, Gumshoe has a lot to offer, and I'm, we're going to continue to play through it. It's very an interesting game, and even from the perspective of, kind of role-playing a detective from the 30s, it's very interesting. But uh, I think Sherlock Holmes Consulting, Consulting Detective is still our favorite from the perspective of people looking to solve a mystery over the course of about maybe an hour and a half, just trying to figure out what's going on there and um, pull the whole thing together and then see how well we did. So uh, we really love Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Um, we're, we're, you know, Gumshoe's been okay so far, but I'm hoping to see some more um, you know, cases come together. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a little bit more. I'll, I'll report back on that one. But um, it, it's a game that has not been reprinted. So it's a little bit of a rarity now. So I stumbled across it at a used bookstore near here and was thrilled to see it just because I'd never seen it anywhere else. It goes for maybe like 60 bucks on eBay. So uh, it, it was nice to be able to find a copy in the wild here and start playing it. But I will continue to report back. But uh, that's the uh, report for today.